This program is designed as a supplement to the printed work packages found in the maintenance manual for the GE LM6000 gas turbine. This demonstration provides a brief overview of the removal, installation, and rigging procedures. It does not include descriptions of standard maintenance practices such as torque, lock wire, and lubrication requirements. Refer to the on-site maintenance manual for a complete and detailed description of these line maintenance procedures. This program will review the procedures for the replacement of the LM6000 variable stator vane or VSV actuators and VSV lever arm push rod end bearing clevis assembly rigging. Replacement of the VSV actuators. The two variable stator vane or VSV actuators are oil operated single piston actuators which operate simultaneously in tandem that is, one pushes up while the other pushes down. The two VSV actuators are mounted to clevises on the front frame at 2 o'clock and 8 o'clock. These actuators are partially obscured by the forward gas turbine trunnion mounts at the 3 and 9 o'clock positions. These VSV actuators provide both hydraulic locking and positioning forces to the high pressure compressor six stages of variable stator vanes. The actuator rod is extended during an increase of gas turbine core speed which opens the VSVs. The actuator rod is retracted with decreasing core speed which closes the VSVs. At shutdown the rods are fully retracted and the VSVs are closed. The VSV actuator internal transducers provide redundant VSV position signals electronically to the hydraulic control unit or HCU. Scheduling of the VSV position is provided electronically, a closed loop feedback system, by the off-engine electronic control unit or ECU via the engine mounted HCU. Removal. To begin, disconnect the electrical connector from the VSV actuator. Position a waste fluid container beneath the VSV actuator. Disconnect the drain lines from the drain adapters. Disconnect the drain adapters from the VSV actuator. Now slide the drain adapters away from the VSV actuator ports to expose the pressure fittings to the actuator. Using the two wrench technique, ensure that the connecting fitting is restrained when loosening these coupling nuts. Disconnect the coupling nuts from the VSV actuator fittings. Remove and discard the packings from the drain adapters. The actuation lever which extends from stage 10 forward to the actuator must be removed with the actuator and moved aft until both are free from behind the forward mount. Then the actuator rod end bearing and guide can be separated from the lever. After removal, the actuator mounting bracket guide slide can remain in place if it does not require maintenance. When detaching the actuation lever, do not change adjustment of the push rod rod end bearings. Any adjustment of the push rod rod end bearing length requires that stage to stage rigging be performed. This procedure will not be covered in this presentation. Remove the nuts, washers and bolts attaching the six stages of push rod bearings to the connecting links. Stages 3, 4, and 5 have bushings in addition to the nuts, washers, and bolts. Store the bolts with their nuts, washers, and bushings attached to their respective push rods for ease of reassembly. If the push rod rod end bearings require corrective maintenance, mark the stage number for each clevis prior to removal. At the aft of the lever arm, remove the nut, washers and spacer from the mount pivot post at stage 10 of the compressor case. Remove the nut and bolt securing the VSV actuator clevis to the bracket. Work the actuator body free from the clevis so the rod end guide can slide free of the mount bracket channel. 
Disengage the lever arm from the mount pivot post and move the actuator and arm aft out from behind the forward mount. Remove the guide from the lever arm keyed post by rotating it 90 degrees. Remove the VSV actuator from the lever arm by sliding the rod end bearing until it is free of the lever arm forward guide post. If the actuator is to be replaced, remove the fittings from it and save these for installation into the new actuator. Installation. If a new actuator is to be installed onto the gas turbine, install the new lubricated packings into the packing grooves of the fittings. Install the fittings into the VSV actuator. Tighten the fittings to 142 inch-pounds of torque. Slide the lever arm guide post to the forward end through the VSV actuator rod end bearing. Then install the Teflon guide block onto the end of the lever. Be sure that the aft mark on the guide faces aft. Secure it in place by rotating the guide 90 degrees. Slide the VSV actuator and lever arm behind the forward mount so that the guide fits into the channel of the actuator mounting bracket. Position the aft end of the actuator lever arm to the stator case mount pivot at about stage 10. Position and attach the rod end bearings of the clevis assemblies to the connecting links at stages IGV through 2 with bolts and washers under both turning surfaces of the bolt head and nut. Tighten the nuts to a torque of 62 inch-pounds. Install the rod end bearings of the clevis assemblies to the bridge connectors at stages 3 through 5. Secure these with bolts, washers and bushings. Place the bolt heads forward. Tighten to a torque of 42 inch-pounds above maximum run-on torque. Attach the aft end of the actuator lever arm to the stator case mount pivot at about stage 10 with a spacer, washer, and nut. Torque the nut to 210 inch-pounds. Secure the actuator body clevis to the bracket with the bolt and nut placing the bolt head forward. Tighten to a torque of 7 inch-pounds above maximum run-on torque. Install new lubricated packings into the actuator rod end and head end drain adapters. Connect the tubing to the VSV actuator fittings. Be sure that the connecting fitting is restrained when tightening the coupling nut. Torque the coupling nuts to 400 inch-pounds. Leak checks. With the gas turbine shut down, a leak check must be performed on all fittings of the VSV system which have had maintenance work performed on them. First, install reducers from the special tool set to the special tool hydraulic actuator unit, torquing them to 142 inch-pounds. After positioning a catch pan under the hoses, disconnect the VSV rod end and head end hoses just downstream of the HCU manifold where the hoses are coupled to tubing. Attach the hoses from the pressurizing unit to the corresponding hydraulic tubing. Then check the pressure lines for leaks by pressurizing the system at 250 PSI and holding that pressure for two minutes. After disconnecting the special tool fittings and hydraulic pump, secure the HCU hose to tube connections. Reconnect the head end tube from the HCU. Reconnect the rod end tube from the HCU. Tighten the head end coupling nut to 710 inch-pounds of torque. Tighten and torque the rod end coupling nut to 500 inch-pounds. Attach the drain adapters to the actuator ports by sliding the drain adapters over the coupling nuts and connecting them to the appropriate actuator ports. Hand tighten the drain adapters. Now the drain adapters must be leak checked using shop air or nitrogen 52 psi minimum pressure attached to the discharge of the drain adapter. The specific manifold seals must hold a backflow of 52 psi and not drop off more than 10 psi in two minutes. 
If this occurs, use a soap solution to detect the leak. When the system is free of leaks, disconnect the shop air line. Connect the drain lines to the drain adapters. Tighten the coupling nuts to 285 inch-pounds of torque. Finally, connect the electrical connector to the actuator. The variable stator vane system does not require rigging after corrective maintenance if none of the adjustments have been disturbed and control room indicators read properly, that is, 100% open and 0% closed, plus or minus 1%. This completes the replacement of the VSV actuator. Rigging of the VSV system. There are two methods of adjusting the VSV actuation lever rod and bearing and clevises. Both require special tools. The preferred method is mechanical and less expensive. The mechanical method requires a single adjustable length fixture to which each rod and bearing is preset. This fixture has a special tool number and may be used in the enclosure of an installed gas turbine. The following is a detailed presentation of this preferred method. Prior to conducting a stage-to-stage -stage rig check or adjustment, assure that the eight spacer bolt gaps per stage are within tolerance and secure. Any loose spacers must have the proper gap between the stator case and unison ring before securing. To begin, Mark the stage number on each clevis assembly prior to removal. Improper location of clevis assemblies causes unpredictable engine operation. For every stage to be checked or adjusted, remove the nut from the bolt securing the push rod, rod and bearing to the connecting link. Next, remove the nut and bolt connecting the push rod clevis to the actuation lever arm. Now remove the bolt from the rod and bearing and the connecting link. Remove the VSV clevis rod and bearing assembly from the VSV lever arm. The special tool gauge set will be used to check each VSV clevis assembly for correct length. Assure that the tool gauge set has been calibrated via the gauge block provided with this set. Install the clevis assembly in the tool gauge set. Refer to the chart in the manual for length tolerance by stage to determine if the clevis assembly is out of tolerance. When referring to this table, assure that your manual contains the current update or change. If required by the specification in the manual, adjust the length by turning the rod end bearing. To do this, loosen the small jam nut using the two wrench technique. Adjust the clevis assembly length to the appropriate length within the tolerances given. When the correct length is set, tighten and torque the jam nut to 65 inch pounds. Safety wire the jam nut. The jam nut safety wire shall not be broken when installing the clevis assemblies onto the actuating arm lever or the bridge connector. Broken safety wire indicates that the push rod adjustments may have been disturbed. Verify that the dial reading is within the required tolerance. Remove the clevis and rod end bearing assembly from the tool set. Replace the gauge block onto the tool set and secure it with the attached pin. At the engine, position the clevis end over the VSV lever arm and the rod end bearing into the connecting link. Install the clevis bolt with the bolt head inboard and attach the nut. Install the rod end bolt with the bolt head facing forward. Install the washers and bushings as required depending upon the individual stage. Tighten the nuts at each position. For stages IGV 1 and 2, Torque the rod end nuts and bolts to 62 inch pounds. For stages 3, 4, and 5, torque the rod end nuts and bolts to 42 inch pounds. These stages have the additional bushing between the aft face of the rod end bridge connector and the washer and nut. 
torque the clevis nuts and bolts to 62 inch-pounds. This completes the static rig check for the VSV system. This concludes the demonstration of the variable stator vane actuator replacement and VSV lever pushrod length mechanical rig. For a more detailed description of these procedures, refer to the printed instructions found in the maintenance manual for the GE LM6000 gas turbine. Thank you.